Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 444-444 for the 13th of May and uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers uh, in the DPA Army and uh, to your mother and uh, to your wife who is your children's mother but if you have your wife, children don't have children and uh, start task they don't you have to don't have children to be the mother then yeah then no mother day for your wife so anyway uh let's start off with the biggest news uh over in the ukraine war over, over the past 24 hours is actually the russian military in a single day lost four different aircraft and uh it's all within the same area here uh in the Bryansk region and and uh it a uh, Mi-8 is shot down first. This was the first aircraft to get shot down. It's at Click C. Uh, and uh, this helicopter was... The, the, the shutdown is actually taken on video. And this hel helicopter is flying abnormally high at a very, very high altitude. And then uh, there was then shot, uh, Sukhoi-34 that was shot down. And then another plane got shot down, a Sukhoi-35. And then... Um, another me had got shot down so the every uh, estimated location is something like this this is the location where they are shot down and uh reportedly the inform the it, it seems like they they are on the way back most of these aircraft like the this one this one i'm not sure about this one so they were on the way back from uh, ukraine and then they got shot down uh in a way they call this an ambush uh, a lot of theory how they are shot down by man pads, you know, send missiles, Patriot, serve air to air missiles like you know, uh, aim, aim one twenty, uh, the MRAM. So nobody had the idea, but there are people who question why is this helicopter flying so high. So apparently, according to RV Vapor, Voyager, uh, they say that this is actually an electronic warfare helicopter. Uh, so that's why they are have they have to fly so high because, uh, their job is to actually jam, uh, air defense systems and and then they are they can jam up to 150 kilometers away so this that's why it was flying that high although it does also seems that they're jamming failed uh, because they got shot down as well so this is actually a the i think the most massive loss of aircraft in a single day since the start of the war uh in the start of the war is a bit unclear who are who got shot down uh, at least in my coverage i i don't have at the at the moment of time i didn't have the information source for the the defense ministries so i didn't know uh, all this information but as per as the inform the sources get more and more better uh this has been the worst day for the russian air force and and then uh, we have uh, the russian defense ministry statement uh they have acknowledged the stem shadow was the one that hit luhan and they said uh, but of course you no know, as as both ministry of defense like to say uh Cruise missiles always hit civilian targets, although I believe it's military targets. And then uh, there are civilians who happen to be uh, retro. So that's just how it is. And an uh, interesting thing that come out from the statement was that the Russian Air Force allegedly reportedly shot down the Ukrainian Super 24 that actually fired this Storm Shadow, as well as the MiG-29 that was covering the aircraft. Uh, I feel like this is coping and uh, or maybe this is uh, making like you no know, revenge but just in words you no know, I did, I'm not sure uh, how is this true so anyway uh, it's 12 May 6 30 p.m. so that's well, that that was when the, the missiles were shot at Luhansk then they say they shot down this two Ukrainian aircraft but in the SIP rep, they did not mention about shooting downs of aircraft. So that is unusual because usually they will mention the shooting down of aircraft. So I'm not sure if I made a mistake. I don't think so. Uh, but it's just unusual. So let's see. We can open. Uh, for example, we can look, open that statement and then we can translate. I do not think. Uh, they mention about shooting down of any aircraft. You see, they only mention a shoot down of a Mi 8. They didn't mention about the Super 24 or the Super 27 or the Mi 29. So they, they did mention it here. 
but they did not mention the location. So without mentioning the location, that is actually uh, against the habits, you know, of how uh, how the Russian Defense Ministry operates in their zip rep, which actually, to me, is a sign that uh, it might not be true. This is uh, this is the reason why you know covering on a daily basis, where I read all these similar reports on a daily basis, or daily basis. I can kind of even identify that oh, this this report is actually written by a different person because the way how they describe locations might be different and in this case uh, this is actually a diversion from the norm where they always mention exactly where they shoot it down so i don't think this is true i think this is just trying to you know appease the public and uh over in another piece of information okay so there is this viral video of a massive massive explosion at a kamenitsky Kamenitsky. So uh, at this uh, storage, this military storage place, as you can see, uh, the way how they have uh, this dugout kind of thing or the, the mounds surrounding the buildings, this is actually a military installation, clearly. And uh, there is a stupidly, as I read, as I've written, a uh, stupidly huge explosion. You can actually go to the Defense Ministry, uh, Defense Politics Asia's Telegram channel to actually check out the video. It's, ridiculous it looks like a tactical nuke so uh it's actually two different explosion one after another uh, in the span of a few like seconds uh like maybe five ten seconds then the second explosion exploded so it's quite uh crazy and uh there's a lot of uh conspiracy theories or theories or analysis or made up stories about uh how much ammunition and uh, how much it worth they got destroyed and what kind of ammunition and uh, stuff that is there I can't possibly imagine how they would know all this information because it's all operational secret. So uh, just know that something that can cause a massive, massive, massive explosion was destroyed. So moving on to uh, and then and another you no know, information uh, from Raiba. So in their uh, in their analysis, they they take note that there was a tactical flight exercise. You know, up to fifty five fighter bombers or attack aircraft of the Ukrainian Air Force participated in this uh, massive air exercise. And uh, so up to 55 aircraft, this is on top of on top of what they are using now at the front line, which is between 15 to 20 aircraft, according to Raiba. So they, which means that the Ukrainian Air Force at this moment, with with you no know, thanks to all the reinforcement and uh, all this new aircraft, new old aircraft that was a uh, given to ukraine from poland from uh can't even can't even remember which which country they give them so now their air force has expanded to the to 70 aircraft which is actually quite a decent number you know it's actually half half an air force for for like a decent size f air force and a effective air force at that so this is actually a uh, pretty significant so so the ukrainian air force is back uh 70 aircraft is quite a number of air, aircraft to be honest and uh, moving on, to, um, there's nothing over at the Kherson front. Uh, we now we go into the front lines. Nothing at the Kherson front uh, of significance to report about. Moving into the Zaporizhia line, uh, we have the Russian Defense Ministry reporting uh, shellings over at the Novo Danilivka, uh, Mala Toshmashka, Melinivka, and uh, as well as Novo Pil. So it is all along the uh, this uh, Zaporizhia line, which. Uh, which is what I call it. So, so the um, we still do not have any indication of the Ukrainian offensive over this region. Uh, it's going to start, and uh, every time we have all these explosions uh, happening over at the Zaporizhia line, it's just going to weaken the Ukrainian forces, and uh, it's actually going to delay the offensive. And even if they they are ready to start, and then you have like a two percent, three percent of your your equipment get destroyed, that's actually still pretty disruptive moving on to the Donetsk front uh we have a uh, uh, attack reported at Novo Mayoske, according to the russian defense ministry uh again they like to say it's a sabotage and reconnaissance group and i believe if i didn't get prigozin the wagner boss wrongly he did criticize the russian defense ministry for calling every single attack a sabotage and recon uh thingy so yeah i also believe that this is actually more like a you no know, small attack or a probing attack uh so it's still an attack to be honest uh rather to just call it recon and uh you know it's 
it's it's weird you know if it's just a recon why are you reporting it i, I don't know no just it's just the way i think about it like you have such a long front line and then you're going to report oh i killed five soldiers five soldiers and then anyway there is a shelling reported at Pavlivka, uh according to the russian defense ministry as well as voleda so this as as i mentioned before this is a continuation of the the weakened the, the shredding of uh the ukrainian forces that's gathered gathered in this position that might be poised to attack so every time uh, all this shelling and uh, airstrikes happens it does delay any potential offensive uh over at marinka we still have our traditional marinka uh, uh attack by the russian defense ministry this time around it's reported both by the state ua and the ukrainian defense ministry i believe uh we can give it a name like the marinka orange juice you no know, like you no know, have a cup of orange juice and the you no know, you keep the doctor away kind of thing yeah no yeah so moving on to uh, at the northwestern part of donetsk we are at the adyevka front and uh, again Myro Shinikov uh, continue to assert that the Russians are attacking at Develsky as well as at Pervomaisky. And again, they are the only, only person or source that actually talks about this. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry, in their report, literally just writes, there is no offensive at, in, this, in this location. So it's, uh, the fighting, you know, is, so I don't know, you know it, it's, it's just a, uh, I do not know who to not trust put it that way <laughs> and then um maroshinikov also mentioned that in the area of vodian or pitney uh, there is counter battles which i believe i read it as a ukrainian counter attack so which means that uh in this front uh we have the russians attacking at pervomaisky and uh, nevelsky and then the ukrainians are attacking vodian and Opitne. so it looks like this so uh, over at the eastern part of uh, Adyevka, uh, we have fighting reported at Krota Balka, according to Deep State UA, the pro-Ukrainian source, uh, as well as uh, Novo Bakhmutivka. So Novo Bakhmutivka is actually in the north, uh, as well as Oleksandropil. So there was this uh, reported attack in this kind of direction by the Russian forces, according to Deep State UA. As you can see, the information is here. So Novo Bakhmutivka, and then there's another information. This is actually by Myro. Maroshnikov, uh, they mentioned about near Alexandropil. So they said that uh, the the Russians actually ejacu ejaculated and then they withdrew. Because they used the word nuts, like they, they, they got again got nuts. Oh, so they got ejaculated and then they withdrew. Yeah, Ukrainian language. Uh, so anyway, moving on, uh, there's nothing at the New York front and uh, we're going to the Bakhmut front. And at the Bakhmut front, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported that the Russians attacked below Hora. Um, yeah, they attacked below Hora. And then, uh, and then uh, the the Russian Defense Ministry reported uh, shelling at Ivaniske, Shasifia, and uh, Hariporivka. And, and uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported that the Russians attacked at Hariporivka and uh, Bodanivka. So it's, it's kind of weird uh, because previously the Ukrainians were in the offensive they are like so overpowering that the russian forces actually run away then suddenly the ukrainian defense ministry said that the russians are attacking you know i i have my adults you know about the ukrainian defense ministry's uh, information there is a joe location of the front line at this position according to deep state ua uh, but they did claim that the fighting is actually last week so interesting and uh over over at the the bakivka Sorry, Berkivsky Berkif, Reservoir. This is the Berkivsky Reservoir. And uh, there is the, uh, this is the Berkivsky Line. So this is the Russian front line. And uh, where they actually fall back uh, from. Uh, from their actually rather strategically important position. And uh, the, the, they got reinforced actually by Wagner forces. The Wagner, according to Brigozin, uh, the, let me hide. The Wagner forces actually... Uh, reinforce uh those troops that is actually at this position and they say that those fighters that did not run away joined the Wagner forces and successfully uh, form up into a coherent uh, unit to repel the ukrainian forces so and uh he did mention that he did not see the U U the russian uh, airborne forces so there is possibly some uh, ukrainian uh, attack uh, that got repelled uh, by the russian forces as they try to approach the line 
tentatively the front line is uh, the Russian line is likely to be here but there's a possibility that the, the front line is actually here so we will continue to monitor to see uh, which is actually the correct front line uh, because the deep state UA the pro Ukrainian source have not committed all to all the way to this point they only committed to this point only so they, they have not really uh, believe that the Russians actually retreat this far back but we shall continue to monitor fighting is reported at Kromovi according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and uh, as and uh, the as we go into the Bakhmut city itself we have information from Prigozhin saying that as long as soon as Wagner forces conquers the entire of Bakhmut city the they will then hand over the the operations to the airborne troops uh, or any other Russian military units for them to hold this position at Bakhmut city so which means that the Russia uh, the the Wagner's operation is simply to capture this part and uh, more or less it's done and uh, fighting is reported at Bakhmut we don't have we do not have a uh, detailed information regarding the fighting within Bakhmut city I believe it's something to do with being Saturday and Sunday so anyway yeah just know that the fighting is still ongoing so we we can still imagine that the Wagner still have this this much to to cover yeah it looks like a shoe like you know there's a shoe and then uh yeah anyway that's all from the Bakhmut front uh over at the Sivas front uh, we do not have anything except a bombardment of uh at Raikorivka according to the Russian Defense Ministry and uh, we have uh, shelling also reported at Dibrova uh, the previous information about Ukrainians attacking at Dibrova and uh, and the Serebransky Forest tree is not repeated so clearly it had failed um, shelling is also reported at Terni and uh, we have a Joe location of uh, Ukrainian forces uh, by the Z archive or Z archive uh, at uh, this location just off Nakievka. so uh they this position is actually uh shot by uh russian artillery so that's how uh the joe location is of where the ukrainian forces are so that's all from the crimea front and uh, moving on to, uh into the sviatovay front uh, we have uh shelling reported as Demakivka, uh, according to the russian defense ministry ukrainian defense ministry however say that the, the russians are attacking and uh, the attacking also involved at Nova Slivsky. So the Russians are reportedly attacking uh, like this. However, the Russians reported fighting at Novo, uh, at Berestove, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So it looks a bit like this. And uh, I would just say that uh, all these are just nothing burgers. Like, you no, know, you buy a burger, they only give you bun, and there's nothing inside. And uh, that's that's what uh, reports in Kupian's front is like. It's like, you no. Know, hey this is the Kupian's front and the Sviatovay front there's nothing inside yeah nothing inside so yeah so anyway and um good moving into the Kupian's front uh we have uh shelling reported at Kurilivka uh, which is actually pretty far away uh from the front line and uh we have shelling also reported at Sinkivka according to the Russian Defense Ministry uh the Ukrainian Defense Ministry said that the Russians attack uh at Nasiotivka again uh i have trust issue with the ukrainian defense ministry now so yeah take that with a massive piece of soledad and uh the U russian defense ministry reported that the ukrainians attack uh at tinkovka uh, wrong color again uh at tinkovka uh yeah also no it's a nothing burger it's like Svetovay, kupians there's nothing inside so and uh however there is um Ukrainian me that was they got shot down over Kupians and uh, yeah that's all I think the Ukrainians have uh, a lot of me helicopter transport helicopters so you never really see the Ukrainians demand for transport hel helicopters so yeah so anyway this is the summary for the day of uh, 444 444 for uh, for the 13th of May uh, for those that are watching on YouTube do press the like button subscribe and uh if you want to catch this sit rep earlier like the dpa sergeants officers and generals do uh visit patreon and uh by becoming a patron sergeant and all the rank above you'll get uh early access to the sit rep otherwise uh you can actually you know 
just watch this as a delayed telecast just like you know what you're doing now on youtube and for those uh dpa sergeants officers and generals nice quote and i'll see you in the next update